Now that was a great walk. And to top it off with the view, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. I mean, look at that view. Take a picture together. Dad? Dad? Dad! Someone call 911! Sir, can you hear me? Are you short of breath? Do you have any chest pain? Hey guys, looks like he's got an ultra level of consciousness. Let's get him on a, a four lead. We'll get a full set of vitals and some oxygen. Yep. Your dad's heart rate is going really slow right now and he's very sick. We need to take him to the hospital as quickly as we can. Do you have any loved ones that you might want to call? I just did, I called my mom. Okay. She'll meet us at the hospital. Okay, do you have any questions that you might want to ask before we leave? No, I, we'll, we'll meet you there. Okay, all right, we'll see you there. Can't find a pulse. He's gone into cardiac arrest. We need I can't to start CPR. What's happening? I, what? What? Is that? What's going on? What is? What are they doing to him? Hey, Kels, what do you need? Need you. Okay. Hey, Graham. Let's get you to pre-alert the hospital. Okay. Just let him know we have uh, uh, an older gentleman, uh, post-cardiac arrest, uh, normal vitals. Uh, we have an airway in place and we're just monitoring right now. Uh, he was hypotensive and we're... Sir, your family's meeting us here at the hospital. We're gonna get you out and into the trauma bay right away, okay? Just need to get him out here, guys. Just nice and, nice and easy as we go. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Spence. I'm the physician currently on service in the ICU right now. It seems as though your husband had a heart attack this morning while out walking, and because of that, his heart then stopped for a period of time. This is what's often referred to as a cardiac arrest. Thankfully, EMS was able to get on scene quite quickly and were able to restart his heart using CPR. That said, I'm still very concerned about the damage his brain may have sustained during the period of time when it was without blood flow and oxygen. It's too early to tell if and how much damage is present to his brain, uh, but I am concerned based on the duration of time without blood flow. <laughs> what we would typically do in a case such as your husband's is to cool him for 24 hours to prevent more damage to the brain, as well as to keep him sedated for that period of time. After that, the plan would then be to wake him up, to re-examine him, and to conduct some tests to see how much damage has happened to his brain. I can't believe this has happened. He was just perfectly fine this morning. Hi. So we have the results of the CT scan of his head back, and I was also able to conduct a neurologic examination with the sedation turned off earlier today. Um, unfortunately, taking those pieces of information together, If we continue treating him, he will likely survive this illness. Uh, but that being said, there's a very high likelihood of lasting neurologic deficit. So, what you're saying is, if he wakes up, what kind of shape will he be in? That's a really good question. If we keep going with the life support modalities that he's currently getting, um, that will buy time for the swelling in the brain to go down. And after that, we'll have a better idea of what neurologic functions are affected and to what extent. Um, that being said, when I look at the CT scan of his head, I think there's a virtual certainty that there's going to be appreciable damage uh, across multiple domains. Unfortunately, I do think it's safe to say that he's going to come out of this a very different person than he did. Um, than he was going in. So, I say we have the option not to treat him. In cases like this, where the brain has sustained a severe injury, there is the option for discontinuing the life-sustaining treatments and instead focusing on comfort-oriented end-of-life care. I can't make that decision. It's an extremely difficult position that you're in. 
have you and your husband ever talked about what he would want done in a serious illness situation such as this? No, that's not something we ever talked about. I can only imagine how difficult this must be for you. Your job as his loved one is to try and guide what we do going forward based on his values and who he was as a person. Would he want us to life the pain and treatment or instead focus on comfort and end of life care? No, that was something we never talked about. No, wait. Wait, I think when we went to see the lawyer at his office, um, there was some language in the document that specified his wishes if he were dying. I don't know where that document is. Unfortunately, documents like that typically aren't very helpful in a situation such as this. As we talked about, if we continue with life-sustaining treatment, but the question remains as to what his new neurologic baseline will look like. Your job as his loved one is to use your knowledge of his values and him as a person to figure out what he would want us to do. Would he want us to continue with life-sustaining treatments or instead focus on comfort and end-of-life care? Yes. In fact, we just finished the, one of the modules in the Plan Well Guide. In it, he gave me authority to be his legal representative. Uh, he told me he would be willing to undergo prolonged ICU care, but he would not continue living unless he could do it independently. He already had huge issues with his health, and, and if he had to take away any of that, any of that quality of life, that would just, that would be such a challenge to him. As difficult as it is to say, it sounds as though the correct course forward is one in which we don't escalate or prolong the medical interventions that he's receiving. Instead, I think he would want us to focus on comfort with the understanding that he would likely pass away in the near future. Uh, you're very fortunate that the two of you had discussed this previously and that you knew what you wanted, more importantly, didn't want. Instead of being left to make these difficult decisions alone, you're more acting as his voice when he doesn't have one. I commend you for respecting your husband's wishes during this critical illness. It's important that we respect his wishes. <laughs>